All right, this one, you say a student carried out an experiment with an electric current known to decrease with time. Okay, this is summer, summer 13, paper 1, 2. Uh. Okay, so the current will decrease with time. So I expect as time increases or as more time passes, my reading should decrease. Okay, let's look at my reading. From the first to the last, 3.62 milliampere. Okay, decrease to 2.8. Okay, decrease to 1.13. Okay, increase to 1.73. Nani, decrease back to 0 0.9. Hmm, which statement could not explain the sus? The sus, I mean the anomalous la, 1.13 milliampere reading. Why? Why you do me dirty? 1.13. You are supposed to fit the trend. Okay, so let's see. Hmm. The person reversed the third and fourth reading. Could be right. Maybe when you fill in the table, you fill in the wrong cell. Ah, yeah, happens to the best of us. Okay, maybe this human error. Possible, possible. He read the emitter incorrectly. Hiya. This should be 2.13. Hiya. Also can, also can. Human error. I mean, it also happened to us before. Who oh, raise your hand if you did a maths paper, you go like, what the heck? I copy it over and then I get a different thing. Wow, what happened? What happened? Okay, you don't know what happened. He took reading at the wrong time. Also can. So all of this is human error. Could it explain things? Yes, human errors. It's not a mistake one. Which, by the way, human errors has also cost the scientific community a lot of money. A conversion error has sunk a spaceship before. It was a few billion USD. So if you make small mistakes, it's okay, as long as you can catch them and try to be a bit more intentional when you're doing experiments. So my elimination is D, but let's look at let's look at D. There was a systematic error in the readings from the emitter. Systematic error will affect every reading. Not just one, but all the readings. Okay? So let me show you how this could look like if let's say I graph, I draw a graph to show you how different the two errors can look. Okay, so let's say I have a graph of graph graph of current against time. So they say current decrease with time. So maybe like this. It is my true value. Ah, ah the line is my true value. I do experiment. 3 2.62, 2.81, 1.13, 1.78. Uh, 0 0.9. So this is the anomalous data. Okay, let me move the so let me move the 0 0.9 higher. So the points are balanced. But this one is your anomalous data, Mark, right? So if it if everyone also anomalous, then the whole graph should shift downwards. So this kind of thing, if there's only one that is problematic, this is normally due to human error. So for example, if let's say I see you in the lab and we do this experiment and then I collect result. And then you come to me and you say, Miss, my answer is not correct. Why? Ah? Well, the first thing I do is I'm going to look at your answer and I go and chat with your friends. So I'm going to chat with your friend uh, Abu and then I will chat with your friend Aladdin and then I will chat with your friend Jasmine. Yes, I'm going through the cast of Aladdin. Okay. Mufasa. Okay, I checked everyone already. But you are the only one with the weird reading. Eh? So what happened? Human error, human error, human error, your error. Okay. But if everyone's reading is also smaller than the real reading, meaning huh, your entire graph is going to be shifted downwards because all the points will plot down. Now, this one ladies and gentlemen, is the systematic error. Whereas this one is the random error. Random human error. Okay. 
Alright, hope that makes sense. I will see you in the next video.